Alright, I am back with another Destiny video, and Evie is sneaking around behind me. She wants to join in on the fun this time, it seems. Um, we'll see just how distracting she'll be, but she's usually pretty good. Right, she's gonna go lay down. Um, Destiny has had a big week. There is a ton of stuff to talk about, but I am not going to get to it all in one video. I am above my average daily <laughs> Destiny article volume at this point, um, ready mix of guides and news and stuff, but I kind of wanted to do a video about something that is related to one of the big things that happened this week, but I didn't get to write like a full article about it, and that is not just Hawkmoon, um, but the Hawkmoon quest itself. And to me, I was very impressed with this quest. It seems like everything we've kind of been hoping to see for an exotic quest that is not necessarily on like the mammoth level of a zero hour or, or a whisper like those you know they can't all be like that there's we've only had two of those really in history um so we we have to kind of make do with uh lesser exotic quests from time to time and that often yields you know pretty good weapons but <clears throat> overall somewhat unmemorable exotic quests and i can't I can't even pinpoint which ones I'm talking about exactly because there's so many of these that have just kind of blended together in time. But like, you know what I'm talking about, where a new exotic quest launches and you talk to whatever the vendor is to start it. You got to do three strikes and five public events, and get 100 art kills, and then maybe like six steps later you will uh, run a strike and there'll be like a special enemy in the strike or like five special things you got to find or something. And then you'll get the weapon. Um, that's we've had a lot of those, and those are not my favorite. Like it's it's better than nothing. It's just I don't know. It, it's not quite what I want to see. And what is what I want to see is what we got from Hawkmoon here, which is a combination of uh, a whole lot of different things. Actually, it's you know there's some grindy elements to it, but it to me it is a very good blend of both story and uh, gameplay in terms of the new stuff they added for it. Uh, the, the quest is based around Crow, as we thought it would be. Like, that's not a huge surprise. Uh, you know, Hawkmoon, Feather Gun, Crow. There's a lot of bird, a lot of bird themes in Destiny. There's a whole lot of birds in Destiny. Osiris, Saint, the Pigeons, the Falcon that's glitching around everywhere. It's, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, I'm just realizing that now for some reason. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the quest line is determined to make us like Crow, which it maddeningly succeeds at because they've made him this like super wholesome, likable character that is nothing like Aldrin, which is aggravating for people who want to hate Aldrin, but it's good. It's good character development. And like Bungie's like really trying to push our buttons uh, to <laughs> to uh, like and uh, come around to Crow's is a not Aldrin, like as, as a totally new character. And this quest does a great job of that. There's a ton of story stuff. Um, it's it's full voice narration. It's not just like scripted text dialogue. Like Crow has a lot of lines. I think Glint has some. And there's there's one part where you go through uh, the, the dam and you find a Crow's old hideout. And he talks you through like all these different objects in his room. And it's like a five or 10 minute dialogue sequence of just him talking about stuff and like explaining like how he had to hide his face and like all the guardians hated him. And like, he's still not quite sure why. And like, he knows that we hated him too. Cause he saw it in our eyes. Like this is very good stuff. And I, I like it. And the, I'll, I'll get to the end in a bit. Cause there's some great lore stuff at the end, but the quest structure itself, I really liked. Finding the feathers with the little clues spelled out in the descriptions are it was a very cool system. I found, I think, the first three or four on my own, just kind of guessing, and then I cheated and asked people for the <laughs> for the last one or the last two. And then, I mean, I, I'm writing guides about where the feathers are, so I would prefer if you would just Google the guide and find mine and use it. Um, but it is, it is kind of like a fun little puzzle thing. I don't know if you can hear this in the video, but as I'm talking about all the birds in Destiny, my wife's alarm is glitched and it goes off every day at noon. And so I'm just hearing like birds chirping in the background because that's her <laughs> alarm theme. So I don't know if the, the mic is picking that up, but I don't want to stop recording. So uh, if you can hear it, I apologize. If not, I'll just sound like an insane person. Um, so the feather hunt was good. I really was impressed that you know, they have you go to Hollywood Grove in the EDZ and you're like, okay, we're going to run a lost sector. 
and like there's going to be something maybe at the end of the lost sector and like you know how many times have we done that for some step of a quest uh but they added an entirely new section to hollow grove like a really really big um jumping puzzle section at the end and like a little combat encounter evie go turn the alarm off thanks you can reach and I, w- I was impressed with how much they added like that is genuinely a lot of stuff there and they added the whole well at least most of the damn section was new too i think i think the last arena share is shared with the strike boss but they they added a lot of new stuff and like it was it was a little bit like whisper mission light like it, it was a jumping puzzle but it's not time it's not that hard but it was still fun and it was so creative um so i really appreciated that aspect of it and then uh the final boss is yeah it's whatever it's just the corrupted mechanic where you throw balls at the guy and the shield blows up but and then you have the gun um, but just as a whole package, it, it checks all the boxes of like not being too grindy, not being like instantly over, like um, some of the exotic quests you've had are so short, just like absurdly short, uh, being very heavy on story and having really great story content. And you get rewarded with the best story content of all, where if you get Hawkmoon and you read the lore, the entire lore passage is about, I th- I, it's got to be Sabathun, like observing us from afar. <laughs> And she's just recounting uh, apparently some party us and Crow had with our ghosts where we just get like hammered and like blackout drunk, and, like are hanging out with each other. And it makes Sabbath you uncomfortable because she doesn't like like warmth and kindness. And like she talks about how she's like alienated from her family and stuff. And like it's a great lore passage. And uh, it's it's so weird to see us like bonding with Crow. And like I think most people kind of understand where the season is heading in terms of like crow probably not being enslaved to spider forever like that seems uh, like a development that might change um but i i don't know if we're on the path to crow being hunter vanguard it's possible uh he still seems like such a new guardian that that seems like a weird role to give him but that could maybe be something that unfolds you know over time in the game rather than like by the end of the season he's somehow hunter vanguard that seems somewhat unlikely to me but I think Bungie has done a great, great job uh, with Crow characterization. You know, we always wanted him to come back and they've been teasing it for like two years or something. And the way they've actually gone and done it has been very impressive. And the Hawkman quest was was part of that. And it's probably the best component of it we've seen so far. We haven't we haven't gotten too, too much else from him outside of this other than little things he says during uh, Wrathborn hunts. And occasionally there's like weekly dialogue he has the express his frustration with how cruel spider is and stuff so there's there's tension brewing there and i'm sure that'll escalate in time um season seasonal hunt is not over we still have that weird cabal scene with zavala coming up at some point uh next week is dawning so i don't think there's going to be much hunt stuff there i do wonder when we're going to switch to new hunts and do cabal ones and go to i think the cosmodrome i don't know it's been what at least a month um so i, I don't know what the deal is with that and then I could go off for, I don't know, another 20 minutes about how awesome the next gen update is on console and how I might actually just go back to being a console main now on PS5. Uh, but that's a whole other thing. And um, I'm, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's an extremely good update and it's probably the best use of my next gen console I've seen so far. Uh, but yep, that's all my thoughts on the Hawkman mission. Uh, I don't like the gun. <laughs> I, I just don't. I I never experienced original PS4 uh, Hawkman because... Or, PS3, I don't know, whatever the era was, uh, because I was on Xbox, and then by the time it came to Xbox, it was nerfed, so I don't know how cool it used to be, and I just don't like the new perk. Um, The random rolls idea is kind of cool, I just don't know how often those are even going to drop, and if any individual perk is going to make that gun amazing, because there's so many hand cannon options in the game, like both legendary and exotic, that it's it's hard to compete, so it, it doesn't jump out at me, but... All right, Evie and I are going to go, but thanks you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.